The Libyan Digest. The Libyan Digest is brought to you by the Libyan Observer. Hello and uh, welcome everyone to the fifth episode of uh, our podcast, The Libyan Digest. Hi everyone, this is Aisha Chaka and Amin Abdul Jalil. Uh, we're, our, we're on our fifth digest and as every episode, new informations new things about the community, what's happening in Libya, what's happening in the world, and its relation to Libya. As you have mentioned in uh, every episode, we we have a topic uh, to talk about. It could be uh, a social topic. It could be uh, about uh, the economic situation uh, we have. It could be uh, about the war, about the pandemic. So this is our podcast. Yes. To come up with a very exciting uh, episode, as every ep- episode, of course, uh, we need guests, we need people who would provide us with new information because I guess I mean and I uh, don't have that knowledge. So therefore, this episode we're going to have new people, two guests actually, to talk more about the topic of today, which is, I mean... Uh, the impact of uh, technology uh, in solving uh, problems or uh, let's say in in, in serving uh, the sectors we we have we have uh, education sectors we we have uh, uh, let, let's say sectors that uh, serve uh, the community in many ways so uh, we are going to focus with uh, specialists mm-hmm. as as you have mentioned in in this way so we are going to talk about technology in general and and we have an example uh, today so stay tuned Well, in Libya, as we know, everything, I don't want to generalize, but basically most of the things we know are on the traditional way. We go traditional all the way. Education, health, uh, services, uh, like communication, uh, electricity, water, everything goes uh, goes traditional. This time, we want to like let people know that it's 2020, people. Mm. Like the world is uh, is uh, evolving, is it evolving. Yes. Yeah, the world is evolving, and we need to like go with the flow. We need to be more like with the world, use technology with the services sector. Mm-hmm. Now today, we're connecting the services sector to technology. Okay, first of all. What is technology? Technology is the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes. What is pra- our practical purposes? Like the, our daily lives. Technology basically is taking over the world. I always say, I always have sayings by the way. Mm-hmm. I always say that we're going to be replaced by technology. Like maybe later we're, we're, we'll be having robots or something. Yes. This is what I say always. So we need to like know how to use this technology, technologies in general, in our favor. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, because for uh, any successful uh, economy, technology becomes a catalyst for social change. The role of technology in community uh, development is to give power and voice to people within uh, the larger uh, ecosystem. It enables citizens to create a better future for themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, back to the services sector. What is services sector in Libya? Mm-hmm. Okay, in Libya, it's the sex the sector that provides uh, services for the individuals, yes. which is supposed to be as uh, as we say, uh, banking, retails, hotels, uh, real estate, education, health, social work, computer services, electricity, gas. And water supply, and and uh, always we 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 have a common saying in, in in these sectors that the system is stuck. The system is it's has stopped, and traditional. They they are claiming. So yeah. we are going to focus on, on these solutions and how uh, technology can change everything in the community. Yeah, we can change Libya. Yes, maybe by technology. And and we have the power. We have the money, but. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, to know that, to know if we can change the world with technology. Today we have yes. uh, uh, we have Tahar Ayad, Chief Executive Officer, uh, Hashim Saleh, Public Relations Officer at Lemma Technologies. What is Lemma Technologies, and what? How can it help in the in what we are uh, proposing today as services sector? New, the new world of today, mm-hmm. the, IT, the, the IT, the technology world. <laughs> yes. Uh, so let's welcome our guests for yes, today, uh, Mr. Uh, Tah and Mr. Hashim. Yes, let's start with you, Mr. Tah. Um, I think uh, technology has an important role to play in um, our daily lives. Uh, I think everything revolves around technology in one way or another. Um, starting from the water heater in, in your home, the air conditioning, um, the elevators that we use all the time, um, the cars we drive, everything around uh, us pretty much is hooked to c- technology. Um, the only issues that we have in Libya is we stuck with what was provided in the market that you can actually get access to, uh, rather than actually using technology to improve the lives of people. Um, I think Libya has been cut off the world for for many many years um, the fact that we didn't have a good internet access for the good part of the last 40 years uh, that took us um, um, uh, kind of uh, in a very very dark uh, age uh, where people have no extra knowledge I guess is they've been told what to say and what to read and what to uh, what to do by the government or, or whatever but they have no access to the outside world mm-hmm. except if they travel uh, which is a luxury that is not provided to everyone so yes. um, if for the last 40 years I guess most of the people will not be able to travel because it was very expensive it was very exclusive to uh, certain groups of people uh, so those are who have been fortunate enough to travel outside of Libya they were able to experience a lot of different uh, technologies they were able to uh, to use these technologies to improve themselves um, if you take an example for the students that are actually left Libya to study abroad um, many of them had uh, um, uh, an interesting experience with technology especially with using computers because when they left Libya most of those guys have no uh, didn't really have computers to use back home um, so that means they have very limited resources in terms of what it is possible uh, I think uh, this day and age uh, uh, technology allows everyone to become uh, smarter uh, obviously depending on how you use it but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you really want to research something and you want to improve yourself technology has a lot of uh, Thanks uh, to given you. us a lot of uh, different ways to do it mm-hmm. um, so there's no excuse now for someone who tell me like it can t- who I guess can say that they have no resources because mm-hmm. it's very cheap, very affordable nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very easy access. Uh, pretty much most of the Libyan homes actually have internet one way or another if you have your yes, cell phone or you actually have uh, dedicated uh, internet access. So the I guess the uh, now people have no choice or have no excuse to, uh, to, to not improve something. themselves. To yes. start something up. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hashim, if we, if we are going to, uh, we have nothing actually 
uh, in, in Libya relating to technology, if we are going to set uh, uh, basics, if we if we are going to set, uh, um, let's say, uh, a perfect service for technology, um, from where we are going to start? Well, I don't completely agree with you with uh-huh. we have nothing. I mm-hmm. think we have the most important aspect of this mm-hmm. thing. We have the youth. Mm-hmm. We have the, uh, they are hungry, the uh, Libyan youth. We, we have nothing relating to technology, I'm, th- I'm talking yeah, about technology. Yeah, yeah, I think by uh, that, but, you know, if we take it specifically, uh, I think we have the energy of the youth. Mm-hmm. Everyone is hungry to prove mm-hmm. and do yes. something yes. and have an impact on the society and their their own, uh, let's say, community, community and mm-hmm. environment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Therefore, uh, w- we believe that, we believe that that, that, is the most valuable thing at Lemma. Mm-hmm. That's why we started by having the idea to initiate this company mm-hmm. to change the the, the, the angle the the angle and the perception from the uh, from the community mm-hmm. because they used to have this stereotyped uh, angle about uh, all IT companies that mm-hmm. they are only specialized in creating Point the system. normal the normal systems yeah mm-hmm. the s- sell- selling systems but we chose to uh, take it to another level in terms of uh, innovation in Libya. So we choose to start by solving the day the the problems that faces the society every day and day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I. For Libya, all we know is the LTT. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. this is the the like. Yeah. Uh, if you come to a very normal citizen, you would say, what do you know about like uh, the technology itself? They would say, internet, LTT, and it's slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For Lemma. How, what can you give to the normal citizen? What, how can you like deliver your ideas to the normal citizen? Yeah, I think um, Lemma's goal is not really just to kind of solve the issues uh, um, to everyday problems only. I think we're what we're trying to do, what Hashim uh, was saying earlier, is that we're trying to build the ecosystem for technology in Libya because most of the people, as you mentioned, when they are asked about technology, their 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 heads, I guess, go straight to either LTT or or uh, the social media uh, network apps that is available. Um, if you think about it, most Libyans don't really need to use technology uh, unless they communicate with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, because even if the basic services that we have in uh, in, in the country are not linked electronically, um, um, earlier uh, you guys spoke about the fact that every time you go to get something done, they tell you the system is down, the system is yes. down. Uh, I think this is not really the system is down. I think the infrastructure is not really built right. Mm-hmm. Um, that means... Uh, the regular citizens or the, uh, the citizens of Libya, the people that are supposed to, uh, their lives supposed to be impacted directly by these services are not getting the service that they promised. Um, so they kind of lose trust in technology because if they want to go to the bank, they tell them the system is down. They go go yeah. get a passport, system is down. Everything is linked to the system and some way or another, the user or the, the, the citizen by themselves, they're like, well, if the system is down, why should we move to technology? I think that's the very bad rep that technology have got mm-hmm. in yes. Libya. Um, also, the other example is if, if you have your brother or your 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 uh, uh, kids um, who are trying to uh, kind of dive into the technology uh, sector, um, 99% of the time after they leave school, they either go start their own business, which is involves around developing the same point of sale systems that are available on the market already. There's not much innovation. They're, they're just trying to kind of follow Re- the flow. Recreate the, the, the usual thing yeah, in the market. Ra- yeah. Rather than trying to solve a real issue, they're just taking it in a way that, well, this guy sells a lot of uh, systems every year and he's making good money. So I'm going to go in and build the okay. system and then s- sell it cheaper than him so I can make more money because the market is big enough to host a lot of these companies. The issue is it's not really a sustainable career in Libya. When you say like you work in the technology sector, um, that doesn't really mean anything because we don't really have a good sector here. If you work with the public companies like the uh, the LTT companies or uh, any of these uh, uh, communication companies that we have that are controlled by the uh, public sector, it's not really a job anymore. Um, 
it's something that you you get stuck for the rest of your life. There's not yeah. much innovation going on because everything is controlled by the, the the public sector. Public sector in every country in the world, it's always slower than the private sector in terms of innovation. Um, and I mean, anywhere else you go, you go in the world, you can see clearly that the uh, impact of private businesses comparing to the public sectors, private sectors uh, are taking over innovation. Uh, and in Libya, as of the last few years, there have been a lot of great yeah. entrepreneurs that came out, um, a lot of apps trying to kind of solve everyday problems, trying mm -hmm. to create a better ecosystem. Uh, I think if we were to give those people the opportunity to kind of uh, build uh, the their ideas, uh, on a clear standard, that would be really great because as of right now, there's no laws that protect entrepreneurs mm -hmm. in Libya. There's no yeah. laws that regulates or rules that regulates how businesses are to interact with each other. There's no special kind of incentives for youth to become innovative uh, because you don't really get any cuts. You know, if you go to, if you, you want to start your own company, uh, you have to go through the traditional method, uh, you have to form a, a company, you have to uh, figure out how you're going to get the capital to start it, raise the capital. Um, also Wait in lines yeah. for your procedure to, uh, oh, to so be done. Like traditional way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think, I think mo most of these things push away the youth from creating companies and creating new innovative ideas. Uh, and unfortunately for the last few years, there have been a lot of international uh, communities or international organizations that came into Libya. Um, and aims to kind of create that ecosystem. The problem is that faces most of these uh, uh, organizations is the fact that we don't have an infrastructure here in Libya. Mm -hmm. So whatever it's, you, whatever the organization is able to do in their own country cannot be applied in Libya because the very basics are not uh, uh, present in Libya. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what's causing the uh, the people not to trust technologies. Yeah, and I think I at Lama, we're trying to tackle it the other way around, is that um, we're not promising them to solve everything. Uh, rather than actually listening to what they need and then provide a solution that makes sense for them. Um, where the system doesn't go down, where if you need it, it's available. Uh, I think sustainable businesses are more important than actually trying to solve an issue and rushing it like it happened with the passports uh, mm. or any anything that requires you to go and stand yes. in lines or yes. banks yeah. most of the banks in libya all the public actually all the public sector banks in libya use very old uh systems, systems. Are, are very outdated mm -hmm. um uh, and i'm not gonna mention any names but there's a very one of the biggest banks in libya uses a software that's supposed to manage the bank uh, infrastructure the uh, the uh, the edition they're using is the second one. Now they have released fourteen, actually twelve more updates. So they're wow. twelve years behind. They're yeah. not. So they're so not not <laughs> up to date. Yeah. So when you mm -hmm. go stand in line and they tell you the system is down, is literally because they're, these guys are using a software that was created uh, more than twelve years ago, mm -hmm. and they have not updated it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, there is an important question uh, about the social media. And uh, what's available uh, here in Libya, the social media, uh, your advice may be um, relating to your company. Uh, can you give uh, everyone who's going to listen to, to this podcast uh, advices how to use uh, the social media as individuals or as uh, organizations or associations in uh, uh, preparing marketing, for example, uh, uh, marketing plans or uh, yeah. Anything relating to to the things that uh, that uh, let's say available uh, yeah. here in Libya. I guess uh, the most important thing in social media and what you follow is to try to to follow the things that are actually trustworthy. So you can actually take, for example, we use the social media to take news. Mm -hmm. Most of the most of us use it for yes. that cause. I believe that you should actually know who you follow and mm -hmm. uh, follow up on the the sources that they take on the news from. Therefore, I believe they have, uh, you know, it's it's a weird thing because mm -hmm. it's a new thing that mm -hmm. came on to us mm -hmm. and we pushed on it yes. full throttle yes. without restrictions, without any background for knowing many, many sources of news. Yeah. So most of us at the beginning, we got confused and then it became a habit for us that mm -hmm. we actually just learned to, to follow the news that we actually took from other people who are maybe 
not even responsible to take it from. Can we yeah. uh, can we call social media a, a technology or a mean uh, uh, to to spread to dec- uh, other technologies or? It is uh, actually a very common way to spread news and. Uh, it's not a technology. It is a technology, uh-huh. but it's a form that uh-huh. that lately it's became became very famous mm-hmm. and. Uh, let's say huge yes. between all of us yes and it was it's easy to access comparing to other ways of taking news from Most newspapers and well. and also it's free it's just on your phone you can just scroll down yes. and up and you will find it yeah. mm-hmm. well for me it's just not for me like i'm not only satisfied with social media okay yes. mm-hmm. i want to like go deeper yeah. into technology itself And uh, for you, as a uh, IT company, can I call it IT compli- company? Yeah, of course. Or yeah. Okay. It's in the name, technology. Yeah, I know. Technology. I just, okay, I am a normal citizen yes, yes, <laughs> who yes. knows nothing about technology, yes. but want to know more, okay? Yeah, yeah sure. sure. For me, like, I've checked your uh, website and everything. We'll share it later later on the page and everything. Yeah. Uh, I've Did you like it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. the, the colorfulness was yeah. uh, great. <laughs> I think I'm. Uh, I think I appear in the. Yeah, yeah. In the background. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're famous. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it just I've seen like I've checked some of the services you provide, and I and and like basically congratulations on the huge steps you mm-hmm. did in the community itself, Thanks. because you guys took the as i said the services sector into a, another level yes like banking mm-hmm. uh, you 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 yep. provided a, a service for banking mm-hmm. right yeah and it was like i was like am i in this bank because i want to do it but i'm not in that yeah <laughs> please tell yeah. me more about it because uh, i'm only giving headlines well, uh, well i guess the the banking thing is the one of our latest projects yes. that we've done uh As you said and you mentioned, when we talk about Lemma, w- the main purpose that we wanted to make in, in our society in Libya is to change the perception from the people about IT companies. Yes. And by, I honestly, I'm, I'm part of this family and I think that the main thing for Lemma is to try solving problems. Mm-hmm. That's why the the first project that we entered is the digital addresses, uh, the project of Makani. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. So w- at the beginning, we thought, what is the most important thing that you may rely on in every service that you can actually think of, think of or, or you want to have? Yeah. You will find out that without an address, you are simply invisible. in this world of course yeah so uh, we had this idea and we started by planning how to tackle or how to initiate it and therefore we find out that digital addressing Libya by putting a system that covers all rounds and the area of the map so by beginning uh, this project we started digging Yes. In, the, in the heart of the problem mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, the journey just uh, began by very small steps I guess yeah. yes. and uh, we, are, we are actually proud that last week we reached f- uh, more than 500,000 uh, addresses yes. all around Libya Beautiful. yeah so I think uh, Taha could uh, yes. put on more details in the beginnings of this project yeah I think um As Hashi mentioned, that without an address, you're actually literally invisible to everyone, uh, including government as well. Um, I think having an address is a human right versus it being an extra luxurious service that you can actually have. Um, when you look at Libya's issues uh, when it comes to uh, services, um, if you were to have an address, you would be able to eliminate a lot of um, issues that face everyday citizens. Um, uh, I think... Um, 
you all know about having to wait in lines in pretty much every sector that you go to, um, yeah. regardless of where you go and which city and what time you go to. Um, I think it gets more complicated when you go to uh, bigger cities like Tripoli and Benghazi, um, where the population is way doubled, actually, the amount of uh, people that we have. Especially in Tripoli. Yeah. So yes. Tripoli almost has yes. about 3 million people. So that's a lot of uh, a lot of people that require services. And the, uh, the, the country itself is not really built mm -hmm. to handle that many requests within a short t period of time because they still rely on the human factor. I think one thing you stepped on, uh, you mentioned earlier that technology is not really here to replace us, as, as you mentioned. It's here more to enhance our experiences. Technology mm -hmm. is here to uh, enable us to do better uh, rather than actually take away. There's a lot of tough things that um, if technology is involved, it will become much easier um, where humans are um, able to uh, innovate more. Um, with McCanny, when we started the project, we spoke with a lot of different agencies. Um, unfortunately, most of these agencies have their own internal system. Uh, so one of them is the uh, electricity company. If you go to the electricity company uh, and there's a, uh, there's, there's a line in, 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 in the bill that you get and it says your address and they just give you a random number and it says West Misrata, for example. Mm -hmm. um, that really is not really an address. They don't even know where you mm -hmm. exist mm -hmm. uh, because they don't really have the, um, system. the system for it. Mm -hmm. um, so they usually go and so let's say the utility bill comes, you'll find them uh, driving around the, the neighborhood looking for that family. If they know the area, then it's good because they can just drive straight to mm -hmm. one person's uh, yeah. home. Um, actually, just last month, I was uh, coming out of my car and the electricity car uh, company car came in and uh, the guy recognized me and he's like, hey, you, you're a Raid family. I'm like, yes, this, that's us. So he handed me like 20 bills. He's like, here you go. This is for your entire family. <laughs> so I had to give <laughs> bills to my uncles, my aunts, the company and the uh, the grocery shop that we own. Um, so back to the point where mechanic comes to kind of solve everyday issues by having a very simple way to um, to tell people where you live. Mm -hmm. uh, or where you work. So if you have a shop, rather than actually start to, um, like today when, when, when we got here, uh, we use mechanic to actually get to this place. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to call me and tell me to come from my home to here, you have to like tell me exactly where to go. Like first roundabout, second roundabout, third roundabout, and yeah, then you have to make yeah. a right, and then there's a roundabout, and then there's like two. Descriptive <laughs> address. Yeah, there's like two streets, and then you make the first right to the street, then find a parking lot and then like the uh, the oh. building with with this sign on top of it. So I think having that complexity uh, when it comes to businesses, Works. it's inconvenient. But imagine having that inconvenience trying to describe where you live to an emergency services. Mm -hmm. So if God forbid you're at home, uh, fire starts. The first thing you got to do is leave, obviously. Um, but if you were lucky to know the phone number to actually call emergency services and actually tell them where you live, then tr good luck trying to tell them exactly where you live and you're panicking you're trying to figure out should i call them should i not call them yeah. and and whether they reach you in time or not yeah and mm -hmm. and the thing is most of the firefighters uh god bless them because they're working really hard to try to kind of accommodate everyone's need but unfortunately because of the lack of technologies they're not able to do their lack jobs. of infrastructure yeah and i think one famous example that we were, were told by uh the central firefighter uh, firefighter organization here in, in Misrata, they one time they um, they got a phone call about a fire in uh, one of the citizens' homes. Um, he picked up the phone, he called him, and he said that I live near Ras mm -hmm. and Ras in Misrata is a hospital yes. that yeah. everyone is uh, very familiar with. Um, so 20 minutes later, the firefighters arrived at the uh, at the hospital, and then they tried to call him, but unfortunately the, the network was, was off yeah the network was really not acting up so they were not able to hold uh, get hold of him and then 20 minutes later so that's like now 40 minutes uh keep in mind there's a fire already at the house yeah, yeah. um so they finally got hold of him and he's like we're at the hospital where are you we can't mm -hmm. see you mm -hmm. so he said well i'm not uh, like right next to rasatuba's hospital i'm next to rasatuba statue mm -hmm. which is about two and a half kilometers away or three kilometers away from the, the other the on other. the other end mm -hmm. yeah so Taking that all uh, all in together, that took them an hour just to get to your location. Yes. Uh, and in an emergency like that. Yeah. If a fire does not really allow you enough time to actually uh, 
uh, do much because every second counts. Literally, like uh, one minute and it will cover up the entire room. The next minute, it will just light up the entire oh, house yes. Yes. and yes. you will not be able to recover. By the time they got to the house, it was already 80% or 90% done. Mm. So that means um, they're, they're, they're already uh, um, out of luck, I guess. But yeah. that could have been resolved simply by having a very easy way to communicate with them using mm. technology, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, uh, actually, we, we are going to, to have uh, this break. Okay. Uh, after the break, we are going to talk about the, the feedback uh, that you have seen from the, the community about Makani. And also we the publicity. Yes, uh, we are going yeah. to, to discover uh, uh, the process, how can we use this uh, application and other things in, in this podcast. Stay with us. We are going to have a break. The Libyan Digest. The Libyan Digest is brought to you by the Libyan Observer. Yes, so we are back to uh, our podcast, uh, the fifth uh, episode of our podcast, the Libyan uh, Digest. Mm -hmm. Yes, Aisha. Well, we're back with the uh, technology and the services uh, services sector, and of yes. course with uh, Lama Technologies Company, uh, and with the what they serve for the community itself, and what we know and what we're supposed to know as people and citizens. Actually, we we have not. Uh, uh, a new world, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, for for some, let's say, we we are trying to to uh, spread uh, a culture. Mm -hmm. We we are trying to encourage people to to use new things. Yeah. Uh, first of all, guys. By the way, congratulations about the the how to say it uh, the prom to promoting promotion mm. vi video oh, that yeah. you. Oh my God! It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yes. It's awesome. Literally, like uh, it tells us what kind of questions yeah. we cannot answer. It's like you said, when how should we say Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like Makani answers it, which is great. Actually, it, it was great, and actually people reacted to it. Mm, yeah, it way got, too much. Like it got a great hype. Uh, yeah, I think in, on on our Facebook page it reached almost seven hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. wow. More than 700,000 views. Uh huh. Uh, I posted on my Twitter account, almost surpassed 17,000 views. You've been trending on Twitter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time, I, I, I'm on Twitter since 2012, I think. I never got this. Uh, yeah, I think this one, one, one of the funniest things is that the video that he posted, uh, I think it was really cool because the Twitter community engaged with him uh, yeah. pretty yeah. well. I think you have 700 followers. No. But the I likes was your first tweet, by the way. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, 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 I remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a shame that I didn't do a screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we can the, archive it. I well, for, I remember. For, for the next video, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of cool things coming up the next few uh, mm. few weeks. Yeah, okay. Uh, but I think even it just shows the impact of uh, technology on 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 how people perceive the ad itself i think a lot of people like loved i guess the way it looked um and uh, uh, some people missed the idea behind all these <laughs> yeah. questions because there's a lot of sarcasm yeah. into into the video itself yeah. um but i think overall we, we we it was a great success for us to uh to to be able to kind of first of all introduce uh, a whole nother level of marketing uh yeah. in terms of video capability and to show highlight the uh the local talents because this video is um, uh, a mixture um, of uh, it was it was it was a cool um, um, uh, kind of experiment for us uh, where everything that we grew up hearing uh, yeah. you know is kind of including in this yeah, yeah. Uh, so and all of the scenarios it brought all the flashbacks for yeah. uh, the things that you used to say when you were you were a or child a kid, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think uh, also showed the great uh, capability of uh, uh, the uh, talented uh, filmmakers mm -hmm. in yeah. Libya, because mm -hmm. uh, all of the video was made and, and edited and shot by Libyans. Um, the script uh, was written by written, a Libyan. Yeah, 
Uh, and I think it's a great teamwork that they have done. Um, yeah. I think they're, they expect a lot of great things to come from these guys because they're really uh, um, they're really talented. I'm mm -hmm. gonna uh, kind of plug them in here. Is their 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 name is uh, Wraith Production. Mm -hmm. um, you guys should check them out because they got a lot of cool stuff uh, okay. on their Facebook or Instagram accounts. The spelling is Geet G double E T Productions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, so um, maybe let's uh, take uh, this topic to to another way and 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 let's talk about uh, the the upcoming uh, projects that uh, uh, Lemma Company is going to do uh, uh, regarding or uh, uh, regarding technology in general. Of course, uh, by starting with the the digital addressing uh, project, Makani. Mm -hmm. Yes, it opened a lot of doors for us in terms of opening opportunities and uh, you know when you have this digital address and it enables you to use a lot of let's say luxurious things mm -hmm. that you don't mm -hmm. even dream about for yeah. example delivery services uh, governmental uh, services. services yeah can it can be actually delivered to you on to your home yeah. bank services and uh, of course uh, in the near future, maybe taxi services. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, by this, uh, by Makani, we built, we s it's like we built a virtual infrastructure. Yes. That actually can serve a lot of things. And we have talked about the basics uh, yeah, yeah. at the beginning of this podcast. Of course. So by this infrastructure, we actually had this idea in the, at the time of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And because of the social distancing yes. and yeah, Ramadan was uh, was in as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So we had this idea that we should maybe have this uh, bank system. Mm -hmm. We created this bank system mm -hmm. that we call it the e-bank, uh, which enables you to take uh, the amount of money, a certain amount of money, and we actually deliver it to your home using mechanic addresses. And uh, which was actually a very refreshing thing for us, mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. honest. I think yeah. uh, to see that you actually did something for the community, and uh, it's, to it's a speck. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's also it's also a proof of concept for for it as well, uh, because as a proof of concept, we we uh, we really had to look at what we can uh, um, do with an address. Uh, we had a lot of theories in the beginning with saying, mm -hmm. uh, well, what can we do with an address in Libya where the government actually doesn't really use it and mm -hmm. the government doesn't actually have an address. Um, uh, so uh, when we sat down as a team, we thought, well, it's COVID-19, it's Ramadan and it's the heat has started picking up. Uh, so we said, let's talk to one of the, um, um, the great partners that we had uh, uh, dealt with the, in, in, in the banking sector. And as has mentioned, we, we launched the e-bank uh, which is a, a very, very easy web application. So the users can actually log in, um, type in um, all the information that's required by the bank, um, take a photo of the check, mm -hmm. uh, and then send it straight to the uh, bank where it gets verified. Um, I think we delivered about 80. Yeah, roughly. 80, roughly 85. Roughly. Uh, um, Roughly above 80. 85 wow. families. Mm -hmm. So 85 mm -hmm. families. Uh, I think the amount was about 200,000 dinars. Uh, uh -huh. That were, uh, uh, I guess, uh, sent. Is it like uh, all over Libya or just uh, the, we, the city? Here? Uh, no. We we started with uh, just one bank. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. Very, it's it's a modest size. Uh, 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 it's one of the the oldest banks here, Al Jamhuria Farah um, Maidan. I think uh, they um, uh, they were great people to kind of listen up to the idea and kind of pick up trying to solve an issue that is facing them. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when we drive by the bank. 99% uh, of the time there's line outside banks yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. their bank is not that big um, it's so small so crowded yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's uh, a corona <laughs> yes. I do hub. <laughs> yeah yeah I you can say that it's it it's could be a corona hub so it's, yeah, it's yeah. a challenge so it's, it's yes. a very big challenge mm -hmm. and yeah. we wanted to kind of as a social responsible like mm -hmm. it's part of our social responsibility to kind of give back to the community and a yeah. contribution yeah it was a free uh, service to uh, to everyone so when we delivered them we didn't take any cuts mm -hmm. We didn't ask mm -hmm. for delivery fees. Um, um, the, the only thing we asked for is that people actually uh, um, write up their experience on Facebook yeah. or uh, or whatever social media. Download uh, Mechani. Yeah. Uh, well, they had to, to use to use the addresses yes. that were provided by Mechani, uh, and that was the cash to kind of 
tell people, hey, if you have an address, slowly we can actually add more services. So if we have uh, tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, we can actually start to impact the decision makers. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Well, we have like, uh, I think roughly now about 35,000 uh, active users that we have on the platform within the last uh, couple of months. Okay. Um, the, so I think the more people we have on board, the, the, the better services that we actually uh, demand the government to do. Uh, so we, we, we started talking with a lot of different agencies about how to kind of utilize the address to provide better services. And spread it. Uh, on, yeah. a nation, uh, on, uh, on a nation nationwide nationwide yeah and mm -hmm. i think um banking services will be an ideal start um yes. also we're not gonna exclude the delivery uh companies the people that actually just uh, whether their companies are actually just freelancers because uh, there's also another thing is a lot of entrepreneurs or or, yeah. or, or uh, freelancers or self-employed people who can easily rely on mechanic yeah. yeah so um we our team consists about uh, 40 five uh, uh, data entry team uh, uh, spreading all over uh, uh, over uh, eight different cities uh, in, in, in Libya, including some in the west, west and east and south of Libya. So to kind of cover up as much as we can. Um, keep in mind, this is a still a private company uh, yeah. where uh, this still, no matter how much resources we, we put in, uh, Libya is a very large uh, country. country yeah. yes. Trying to yes. cover it with a private sector where um, the lack of, uh, not funding per se, it's just the lack of uh, having the human resource to do it. And then if you have human resources, you need to actually guarantee their rights. Um, and that's uh, that's all another topic for another podcast. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but I think... Uh, we we're, we're trying to uh, lead the way in terms of what services can do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think Makani is a step, and then we can add on uh, more cool stuff in the future. Yes. Well, yes. can I say I'm really proud? I, I don't yes. even. <laughs> I'm I'm not even sure. I mean, I'm not part of the company itself, mm. but really, it's very yeah. a huge step into the into breaking the traditional way of doing things mm -hmm. because, as I said earlier. Libyans love the traditional way of everything. Why do we have to stay in lines in banks? Yeah. Why do we have to wait? We for bring the, the bank to you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, can we mm. expect to have, let's say, Uber? Uber service, maybe, by the Lemma technologies? Well, it's, it's about, you know... Uh, Something like Uber. Yeah, yeah. As I, as I mentioned earlier, having these digital addresses it can open services like yeah. taxis yes, and uh, yes. delivery systems um, w to be honest we were planning to release an app uh -huh. Ooh, I that, yeah <laughs> okay this summer actually. this summer yeah. unfortunately <laughs> with covid-19 and uh, other uh, and the war and uh, yeah. other Civilians. other other uh, let's say holders that uh, c didn't make us able to meet with the timeline that we are we were actually planning to, to launch it. Mm -hmm. But uh, expect uh, the service, mm -hmm. maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe this by... This is maybe exclusive. Maybe yes. Yeah, Libyan maybe by judges. next year. <laughs> Should we say the name? I think, I think yeah. So, um, so the idea is uh, to, again, going back to the mm -hmm. idea, we're not mm -hmm. just uh, another technology company trying yes. to provide services. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what we're, we're, we're hoping for when we uh, created the, uh, the concept and the name of the app is... Tem. Tem. Oh. Um, okay. And uh, Tem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tem. That's the whole point. Yeah. Yes. So yes. yeah, Tem. Like it's one of the most used word in Libya. So yes. if you ask someone to drop you off at the airport, Tem. tem. Yes. Bring me pizza. Tem. tem. So we thought, well, if Creative. you want to get it done, mm -hmm. then use Tem. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so the idea was also to create an ecosystem where freelancers, mm -hmm. self-employed people, companies uh, are able to sign up. Uh, they are able to interact with customers from all over uh, the the country. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not power. It's not really our drivers and our company that's doing the deliveries. It's actually uh -huh. enabling wow. anyone in Libya to actually make it a, 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 an income. So mm -hmm. that including pretty much. Yeah, uh, I, I, let's say that it's a platform for f all freelancers mm -hmm. all over yeah, Libya. Yeah. Wow. So if you want to be, if you are a car driver, if you want to be. Mm -hmm. Delivery person. Yeah, you can just simply register <laughs> in this and do it. Other kinds of jobs, for mm -hmm. example, if you are a utility specialist or, or plumber. a plumber yeah. or yeah. any yeah. any so kind of job, content creator. You can just, yeah. of course, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. all sorts of jobs. Yes. You just simply log in, mm -hmm. have yeah. 
have an account and you will be able to be how do you say it on the stream yeah. yes yeah so yeah. i guess if you're looking for a service this is the only app that you actually need to use so mm -hmm. if you need a plumber if you need someone to actually fix up your fridge, a taxi driver mm -hmm. taxi driver mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. also if you need someone to teach you something uh it's also included Tutors. in the app. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what this uh unlocks is the potential of having um mm -hmm. living youth uh interact with um reach out to customers because now if you are a plumber a Libyan plumber let's just take mm -hmm. an example that we have in, in Libya mm -hmm. so if you are a plumber in Libya you usually uh, from another nationality so if you're Egyptian uh, from Chad Nigeria or, or, or any yes. of the uh, nationalities that are available on the market if you're a Libyan plumber the chances of you getting a job is less than the other uh, the mm -hmm. foreigners yes. uh, the reason why is foreigners actually you find them on the streets so you can yes. actually go around the roundabout and you have a plumber you have a uh, construction person True. you can mm -hmm. have anyone yes uh, in the roundabout yeah, uh, yeah. with libyans because of this i guess we're not there's not i think it's reputation maybe i think the society puts this idea where if you are a libyan plumber and you're sitting outside mm -hmm. on the curbside waiting for someone to Libya. come and give you a job mm -hmm. it's, it's a shame it's, it's a it's a shame thing yeah mm -hmm. and, I, and i think um one way of solving it is by introducing technologies because usually if I'm asking for if, I, if I'm looking for a Libyan mm -hmm. plumber you ask a friend uh, for, yeah I'll ask yes. Hashem uh, Hashem yes. do, yeah. do you know yeah, a guy yeah, yeah, he's like yeah I know him so that's how he gets the job mm -hmm. but it should be another way where they can simply sign up mm -hmm. have a profile and it be more organized yeah so yeah. they can yes. keep track of how many clients they got they can keep track of how many ratings they got because every wow. time you use the service so uh, uh, so let's say I'm a plumber Hashem uh, hires me to do a job at his home um, so after I get the job done, he can mm -hmm. go and, and give him rating. the rating, rating, yes. wow. like comments. If like uh -huh. if I did a good job or, or mm -hmm. a bad job, uh, and um, and even the transaction between them, uh, because all of the service providers will be verified. Mm -hmm. So um, you're not getting any fake. Uh, service provider. So if he's a plumber, we have to verify him one way or another. So we get his police certificate, we get the experience, we get our recommendation letters. So we have everything on file in case something happens, then we can go and like, hey, this is what we have on him. Uh -huh. um, so I think this so is going to be for 2021. I yeah, think, and also, uh, and also, I think so. this opens the the field for competition between mm -hmm. between these. Uh, these specialists uh -huh. yeah. we don't want to be competing against other companies versus mm. them competing against each other because we want to provide the platform yes and then they can just go for it mm. okay. uh, before concluding our uh, our discussion it was an incredible one actually uh, we we have talked about the the feedback uh, yeah. before having our first break yeah. uh, the feedback about uh, the new ideas uh, y your company has uh, launched uh, the feedback about the uh, the application uh, mechanic and and the results that uh, that this application has done uh, and and uh, the second question maybe let's talk about the awareness uh, how can we raise awareness our community uh, uh, needs uh, let's say sessions uh, specialists who can uh, advise them and and uh, encourage them to, to use uh, such new things I guess I guess the idea of this is to to make these people know what they can use for example the addresses of a mechanic for mm -hmm. if we actually m manage to to deliver this message to each and every one of them I guess we will get the job done and that's a marketing thing that mm -hmm. we are actually yeah. it's a wider marketing plan mm -hmm. that we just started by the first ad that you that I should just mentioned mm -hmm. it will be another series of other ads Great. inshallah and in in the near future yes. so we can broad the prospect and the image of Makani mm -hmm. all around uh, Libya and therefore everything will progress and uh, every time you know as Taha stepped on earlier every time you have users you know what what you can actually do for them more and what kind of services that you can actually innovate for them mm -hmm. and I believe these are a close steps small steps sometimes if you can actually actually uh. describe them that way but at the end I guess uh, we will get to the point that we actually imagined ourselves that we will reach finally yes great yes yeah, uh, I think um, also people need to realize that um, 
rather than just listening to the system, I guess the government or the system of, of, of how we do stuff, um, giving a, 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 a new or this is not just for Lama or Makani apps, but actually giving the opportunity for local companies um, to innovate is a really great thing to support mm -hmm. each other rather than actually trying to say diminish this company. Because one of the things that we had to face in the beginning is like, why are you guys doing this job? This is a government job. This, you're not supposed to do this. Why are you yeah. giving me an address? I don't need an address. And, and I think most people are scared or hesitant as, 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 as why would you do something like this where the government doesn't yeah. actually do it? Um, so I think the more people sit down and relax and just think about it for one second, if you have an address, which is a human rights thing, uh, what can you get and what can you demand for? So with the lockdown that happened in Tripoli and, 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 and another, other, other cities, when the government enforces a 24-hour curfew where they can't actually leave your home, but then you actually still need to buy groceries or get stuff to your home mm -hmm. and you can't get them, but you really can't demand the government to do anything about it unless you actually have an address. Um, so if you don't have an address, that means you can't ask for stuff. Yeah. And if there's a company that provides, whether it's Makani or Lama or another company, then you should at least use their app, not for benefit them specifically, but then when you actually um, start asking the government, demanding the government to do something. Yeah, I was like, at least activate these addresses, at mm. least recognize yeah. this company as yes. it is so that you can actually improve the services that you provide. If you, I'm okay with it telling me like not to leave the house for 24 hours, as long as I can pick up the phone or use an app to actually get the food delivered to me. And I think yeah. uh, this is one of the great things, one of the, the things that everyone uh, in Libya needs to mm -hmm. think if we don't support uh, those startups, those ideas that are popping up, we're mm -hmm. killing innovation in our society. Yes. And we're always going to be stuck with the old system where the system is broken. Mm -hmm. If we support all of the startups in Libya across the, uh, across, uh, across the spectrum in terms of technology, industry, uh, uh, trading, if we are truly want to make a huge difference in our lives, we have to support, support these smaller yes. uh, uh, initiatives because those guys are... are we're here to stay. We're not going to close up because one person mm -hmm. tells us mm -hmm. you can't do this. We're here to fight because when we're fighting, we're actually fighting to improve the lives of millions of people. Because for the first time now, you as a Libyan citizen, you actually have an address to call your own mm -hmm. versus trying to describe it. Mm -hmm. So I think as society, we need to support yeah. uh, everyone trying to stand behind them and make sure that you are giving them all of the attention and they encourage, uh, encourage them to yeah, do and give more them good feedback yes. rather yes. than trying to destroy them yeah. that way we can make a huge change in the society using uh, technology and a very modest thing supporting each other yeah. and in the future I hope uh, that you, your company uh, will focus on, on education and, and how can technology uh, improve the educational system? It looks and like and there are big plans. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot of cool, uh, a lot of cool stuffs. We yes. uh, we're, we're planning. Uh, I don't know if you have time or not, but there's one small thing about uh, uh, about uh, technology how it evolves with the medical system. Mm -hmm. uh, so when the epidemic started, we actually des developed a software for the. Uh, uh, for the uh, early Check. detection centers in, in Masrata, uh -huh. where beforehand you had to use paper mm -hmm. to actually write down the symptoms of the person who was uh -huh. suspected to be corona uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, positive. Um, we all know about cross-contamination, so if you use my bottle and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm infected, yes. then the chance of you getting it is high. So imagine if doctors are moving papers around. Yes. Yes. Uh, so we, we developed the system and we give it for free for, for uh, the city of Masrata where uh, doctors, uh, nurses are able to kind of input all the information digitally mm -hmm. that enhance their their experience and um, replace the paper. transmission of the uh, of the, the paper yes. uh, 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 along the way. So education, expect a lot of cool stuff to coming up in the next few years. We are we're working on a lot of cool stuff with uh, with the education sector, mm -hmm. medical se sector, and then the banking sector. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. uh, actually, we are really proud uh, to yeah. have uh, Very. such a project, and and we do encourage. Uh, this yeah. project. Just. Well, thank you guys for the great episode and mm -hmm. the amount of information uh, that uh, we learned from you. Because mm -hmm. for me personally, like technologies, I only know like phones and yes. Like, Are you gonna use media. download the app now? I will. Oh uh, yeah, yes. of course, guys. <laughs> okay. by, by the way, yeah, <laughs> uh, the app is available on iOS and mm -hmm. uh, Android. Android. Yes, it's free. 
and uh, the addresses are for free. Yeah, uh, of course, of course, you. you have a message at the at the end of this uh, amusing podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we want to to hear uh, your message, uh, Mr. Ash. Okay, so uh, I guess the message is: Lama just produced uh, some some innovative project mm-hmm. that we have never never seen such like in Libya mm-hmm. by this effectiveness, of course. The digital address is, uh, is let's say, a special thing that you actually have. You don't have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. It's like having an email, if you if you would like mm-hmm. to describe it that way, mm-hmm. and it enables y- it enables you to reach spots and targeted targets that you you never dreamed of knowing in a simple way, rather than having the descriptive addresses. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I encourage everyone to. Use Makani, download it now and uh, enjoy it. Let us know yeah. what uh, what do you think about it too. Of course, yeah, give us our feedback, yeah. your feedback on mm. our Facebook pages, yes. of course. Yes. Well, I think this is it for today's digest. Uh, Mr. Tahar Ayad, Chief Executive Officer, Hashem Saleh, Public Relation Officer at Lemma Technologies. Thank you so much for your time today. And we're happy to have you. And of course, everyone, please download Mekani. It's so mm-hmm. ha- helpful. And as Mr. Taha said, sit back and relax. Just use use the services that are offered to you guys. Uh, yes. So uh, uh, this is a creative thing, actually. We, we have uh, uh, listened to in, in, in this podcast. Mm-hmm. And, and and we hope in, in the future we are, we are going to see another uh, uh project <laughs> projects and and another uh, effective let's say uh, uh technologies that that will we uh, that will help us at the end so this is the end of uh, our first uh, our fifth uh podcast yeah. uh the Libyan digest see you next week thank you bye guys thank you thank you thank you The Libyan Digest. The Libyan Digest is brought to you by the Libyan Observer.